You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy, starting now. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to That Gratitude Guy podcast. I am David George Brooke, your host, where my mission is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their lives that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. What you can expect is a deeper dive into gratitude's immense power, a gratitude tip of the show, or maybe a gratitude nugget. You can always find out how to be a gratitude believer, and then maybe one or three takeaways from today's show and my guest today as well. My podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and all the other areas where you can get podcasts. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I do appreciate that. And also, people ask me a lot about the gratitude journals and so forth. To purchase a gratitude journal and to find out more about my gratitude coaching and speaking, you can reach me at thatgratitudeguy.com. So let me get on with the show with my favorite part of the show, which is my guest. I'm very excited to have my guest today. Let me just read you a little background. Jabuna Wobia, PhD, MSN, RN, is the founder and executive director of Nurses Bond Incorporated. Dr. Wobia comes with a wealth of knowledge in healthcare leadership and management with over 15 years of experience. He believes in helping individuals in any capacity to gain their momentum to live their dreams and aspirations. Due to his passion for social change, he believes that the best way to affect change is through education, which has the power to make impact in the lives of individuals. As a healthcare leader, he has contributed immensely to not only saving lives, but coaching and transforming other nurses and healthcare leaders to follow their passion and make the healthcare system better than when they met it. And let me just mention, I could go on quite a bit longer, but rather than do that, I am just going to introduce him right now, Chibu to his friends. Chibu, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Thanks for having me. You bet. You bet. I always start out with the show because I always like to give people a context. Tell the listeners and the viewers how you and I met. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for that. Um, Someone talked to me and um, I have a good friend of mine, so I was just looking for um, you know, a keynote speaker in my forthcoming conference. And somebody reached out to me and said, hey, you are just like that gratitude guy. Please reach out to him. I said, what does that mean? Because I love, uh, you know, thankful Thursdays, which I'm going to talk about and, you know, being grateful. And um, she said, there's someone that's, uh, you know, that gratitude guy, just like you, reach out to him. So that was the only, that was how I reached out to you. And, you know, when we, we talked, we connected. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's what's so much fun when we, in the first 20 seconds, I go, I love this guy. Where did this guy come from? He's got so much energy and I always take pride in my energy and so forth. So to, uh, Chibu, to give the, the listeners and viewers a context, sort of back up a little bit. It's I said, I could have read another 30 to 60 seconds on some of the things you've done from multiple degrees, PhD, MBA, M, M, I think MBA, MS Science, if I'm not mistaken. But tell, kind of back up and tell the story about how you started. Let's start with maybe your education path from about 18 or 20 on. Thank you so much for that. Um, I really appreciate, you know, education, uh, where I come from, we, we love education. And um, I just want to say that, you know, after my undergraduates, I did nothing. I just wanted to know the reason why people behave the way they do. You know, when we were in our college, you know, they used to tell us about the rat race in America, you know, and rich dad, poor dad. And I said, when I get to America, I'm just going to make sure that I will not join that rat race, you know? So <laughs> it was just me. And so when I got here, I decided to say, hmm, let me just know the reason why people behave the way they do. Because I came here and um, I discovered that n- nobody, you know, everybody is just like, um, how will I put it? They're just on their own. And I didn't see the love, the connection, the bond, you know, that, you know, we, we enjoy over there in Africa. And I just wanted to find out the reason why people behave the way they do. So um, I went into counseling and psychology, okay, at La Sierra University here in Riverside. And actually, I, I learned a lot of things. One thing that I would never forget is that you cannot be all things to all people. No matter what you do, you cannot satisfy everybody at the same time. I said, hmm, 
that's great. <laughs> so after that, I went on to do my MSN, which is the Masters in Nursing, um, Leadership and Management, because I, I, I just wanted to help people. You know, I just wanted to put smiles in people's faces because I see that, you know, what rules this world is smiles. You can't give what you don't have. And when I see people frown and, you know, work in the hospital and, uh, you know, the, both the providers and the people that are sick, you know, I just say, no, there is something that you need to give that can brighten someone else's day. And that is being thankful, being grateful. So I decided to see how I will use my personality to give you know, the world what they really need. So that was what I did. And I, I went into management. You know, after that, I said, OK, um, this is nothing. Why don't I you know, look at healthcare you know, in a holistic way? So I went on to do my PhD in healthcare administration and management. So um, that really opened my eyes, not only in the nursing session, but how to, you know, take care of people, okay, you know, take care of not only, you know, the sick, but the employees. And, you know, in nurses, but we always say that self-care is not selfish. You know, people mm -hmm. keep working and, you know, taking care of others, but nobody takes care of themselves. You know, they, nobody takes care of them. So I decided to be that guy you know, that helps individuals <laughs> to take care of themselves, you know. <laughs> Excellent. And so backing, that's me. And Chibu, just backing up a little bit to, um, you came from where in Africa? I'm from Nigeria. Nigeria, that's what I was thinking. Yes. So was there, because again, I've been so impressed with you since I met you and all the things that you're doing and have done, will do, and are doing uh, consistently. Was there, was there pressure in your family? Was there an expectation or is this something more that, that you had, you had the mom and dad and everybody's found, we're going to get education. Or is this something that you kind of just, you know what, I'm going to go you know, chart my own path, if you will, or chart my own course. How did that work for you when you were you know, getting ready to come to the States and, and go to college and so forth? No, no, but one thing is, is a family team. You know, I came from a family where we are grateful. We know that things we have is not our right, but it's a privilege. You know, mm -hmm. to breathe is a privilege, to live you know, is a privilege. My dad being a professor, he always, you know, uh, we are always from a Christian family where you do morning prayer in the morning before leaving everybody. So dad, mom will bring the kids together. After praying, he will ask everybody, you know, what are your plans today? What are your plans today? And at the end, he says, wherever you go, brighten someone's corner and remember home. So those two things, I, you know, I, I came from a place that, you know, you wake up in the morning, you, 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 you appreciate nature, you know, that is a, you know, is a privilege for you to be alive, you know, mm -hmm. so that's, um, that was the environment I found myself. So growing up, I used that gratitude, you know, that's how we met too. I exactly. used, I, I, yes, I grew up by being grateful every day. You know, when I come back home, I look at myself, I say, God, thank you today because, you know, you've given me all that I wanted. You know, mm -hmm. something like that. So that was how I grew up and getting into nursing, you know, humanitarian service and helping people. I knew that I'm here for a reason, for a purpose, just to, like I've earlier mentioned, just to brighten someone else's day. So I have it in me and I have to give it, you know, you can't give what you don't have. Right. So that was my background and um, that was how I started. So, <laughs> so that's so cool. So you mentioned the rat race. So from somebody who would have a fresh perspective from Africa, from Nigeria and coming over here, hearing about, do I want to join the rat race, rich dad, poor dad? What, what did you kind of experience those first few years? Was the way people described, was it true? That's just like, it's crazy. And everybody's trying in the rat race and like the rat in the little cage, that keeps running around, never gets anywhere. What did you kind of discover? Number one, like I said, I, I just wanted to know the reason why people behave the way they do. Mm -hmm. um, in my office, I wrote something everywhere I go. I, I, I always write something on my board. It says, um, no rat race, work with plants. You know, <laughs> as a director, when I went there, my manager said, what is that? I said, yes, I am not here to run a rat race. I am here to work with plants. So I see that people live, I, I call it, this is my own time, fake lives. They live other people's lives, you know? That's why they keep running and running these rat race. But if you have your plans together, and for example, I teach my students, you know, what are your five years plans, two years plans, 10 years plans? If you have plan, you know, there's a proverb that says, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Mm -hmm. So in order to avoid the rat race, I discovered that you need to have a plan for yourself. Every day, like I said, my dad used to ask us, what are your plans for today? Mm -hmm. Every day you need to have a plan. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, that doesn't mean that you meet all your plans, but at least have something. Right. Even if you don't mean, if you have 10 plans today and you meet seven, you appreciate yourself, you know, you appreciate yourself, you celebrate baby steps and move on.
So, but if you don't have for, if you don't have plans, guess what happened? You fall for anything. Exactly. So, so that's why you know the rat race. That's what I found here. You know that to avoid the rat race, you need to have your plan. Absolutely. So that thing has always been in my mind. And I have it every day and I write it on every board, no rat race, work with plan. Well, and it's one of the reasons why you and I think so similarly, and I'll be speaking for Nurses Bond, which we'll talk about in a second here in October, but you and I are so much on the same page. And, and yet at the same time, I can't sometimes help but wonder about some of these other people and not to point fingers like Chibu and David have got it, nobody else does, but why people behave the way they do. What would you say you kind of discovered about that? Because I've, I've just, sometimes I don't want to point fingers, but I say, I just don't understand. People refuse to accept responsibility. Why are so many people negative instead of being, who decided they'd be negative instead of positive? I've always said if Chibu and David were walking down the street and we told 10 people, we're going to start our own uh, chocolate chip cookie factory, 10 of the, nine of the 10 would say, are you guys crazy? And they'd say it was a terrible idea. You know, so why did we decide that nine out of 10 people are negative? What did you kind of discover as you really looked into the and, and got to know all these people? Why do people behave the way they do? Thank you. It's called mm -hmm. foundation. Mm. You know, if you don't have foundation, I have said it before, you can't give what you don't have. Some mm -hmm. people just grew up. They don't know the reason why they exist. They don't know why they are doing the things they are doing. If you ask like 80% of people said, why do you join nursing? Why do you join healthcare? Why do you join entertainment industry? So many of them don't know. They might say, mm -hmm. oh, I saw that, you know, celebrity, I wanted to be like him. I saw that celebrity, I wanted to be like her. You just want to be like someone you don't know inside you if you have the foundation. So that's why when you see people, they run a rat race. You know, so many people have different degrees. They have tried too many jobs because they cannot even sit down, plan, you know, figure out what they want to do. That's why people do these rat race. That's just from my own opinion. And I believe when I teach people in the Aspiring Leaders Club, know who you are and who you are and the reason why you are doing what you are doing. We call it intentionality. You have to be intentional in things that you do. So many people don't know how to be intentional. So in my class, when I teach them intentionality, that's what it is. And that's what I have figured out that is lacking in people, you know, that run rat race. And I try to get people to their route, to the roots, to the foundation, and we build it from there. Mm -hmm. And intentionality is such a great word because it's all about what is your intention? Where do you plan to go? Do you have plans for the day? Like your dad said to you, I think, what are your plans for the day? Which I think is really cool. And I just think that there's, there's a module, I'll mention this in October when I speak to the group, but I call it find yourself find your talent, find your passion, find your purpose. And each right. one kind of leads to the next. The first one, I contend the most important relationship that David has is with David. Chibu is with Chibu and so forth. The person you see in the mirror, get that relationship really solid, then figure out what your talent is, then figure out what you're passionate about, and then you'll probably find your purpose. But I just think that's interesting. No foundation, no reason for living, no purpose. One of the things is, is doesn't it seem like a lot of people could use a mentor? Wouldn't that help in a lot of cases? Correct. Yes. But people don't know, you know, we also teach these things. We also teach this. People don't know the usefulness of mentorship. Mm -hmm. You can never go without having a mentor. I, I'm just saying that you can never go. It's not that you can never go, but you can never do that very well. You need someone in our stuff. We also, in our, in our aspiring leaders, we call it learning from experience. Okay. You need to learn from someone who has gone through that route before. Mentorship is great, but the issue is with, with, with the kind of um, what's the um, fulfillment that people have, you know, half backed information they have. They think that, oh, I'm, I'm on my own. I make my own money. I don't need anyone, you know. So humility is not found in people, you know, because you have to be humble yourself to go through a mentor. So that's the thing that people lack to, and that's also the reason why people jump from one thing to another. If you have various mentors, two, three mentors, or people that you are looking up to that are real, not fans, so <laughs> you will see how you will be able to grow in life. Yes. And I think you mentioned too, Inspiring Leaders Club, and I know that you teach that. And I've always sort of wondered this, because I asked you about this when I first met you, is where does your motivation come from? And I asked you in your family, you said your dad said you have plans every day. And so obviously there's a foundational piece as well, but there are just some people that you and I meet that are very motivated, very energized, very driven, and others that just, I, I used to joke about some friends of my son that all they did was play games and, and uh, smoke marijuana and, shoot and play video games. And I thought, wow, where's the motivation? So in the Inspiring Leaders Club, can you 
inspire, hence the name, motivate, inspire, coach people to get to a higher level, or do they have to kind of already be there when they come to that club to, to be listening to the professor uh, will we'll be up? No, you see, we coach people that without, with zero knowledge of, you know, what they are even doing. It mm. doesn't really matter. That's why I said, we give you the foundation. We give you meaning. Okay, we give you the reason why you are doing the things that you are doing. Like you have said, some people are doing are very successful today. And if you ask them why are they been doing what they are doing, they don't know. Mm -hmm. So we take them back and said, hey, do you know the reason why you are doing what you are doing? We try to give them that foundation. Like you said, um, like we've also mentioned, people can just say, oh, I want to be like this guy. I want to be like that guy. They struggle and they keep moving. You know, there is there's something called talent. There is also when you develop that talent, develop who you are and who you want to be. So if you don't know where you are heading to, you can just be successful and one day you just crash. Mm -hmm. So we teach people to have a baseline, to have a standard that is suitable for all your conducts. If you don't have that standard, if you know, you know, sometimes life takes you up and down. When you are falling, you will just crash because you don't have a standard. So what we do is to help people build that standard. Even if they are vice presidents and they see that they don't even have that standard, they go back quickly and update. And or people that just want to grow, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to do it. We help them to grow to that level. Yes, you can just be successful without knowing what you are doing. Mm -hmm. But the question is, will it last? Do you have a foundation in case anything happens? Okay. I, do you know how to bounce back? Those are the things that we help them to push. And all these things, are, you know, is part of the nurse's bond. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we'll talk about that in a second, too. And I just wrote down, have a baseline. One of the reasons I think that's interesting is to give somebody sort of a starting point or a place to, to, you know, ground zero, whatever you want to call it, where they start off of. And yet at the same time, I think I know I fall into this trap every so often and people do, and that's comparing myself to other people. And it's really not the best thing to do. I, I liken it to a cat chasing its tail. They're never going to catch their tail. So how do you have them establish a baseline and at the same time do it without having them compared to the person over here that has this success or this car, or this house or this job? Thank you. There is nothing wrong with comparing yourself. There is nothing wrong. You know, there's even between jealous and envy. This is going to be something else. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can envy someone and say, oh, I envy this person not being jealous. Okay. Oh, this person is successful. How can I get there? And this is what we teach them in our aspiring leaders club. Like, how do you get a mentor? How do you aspire to mm -hmm. be like someone? But if you don't have the same foundation, if you don't have the same mindset, okay. If you don't have the same belief system, it will not work. That's the issue right there. Yeah, you can mimic someone, you can look at a person, but number one thing is, what do you have in you? Why should you be like Dr. Chiba? Why should you be like Debbie? Why? If you don't know the reason, oh, it's because he makes money, that's not a reason. Right. You have to have something in common that is driving you. And that is what I call it, you know, that's the baseline. If you don't have the same drive, it will be difficult for you to mimic whoever you want to mimic or mm -hmm. you, for you to follow or for you to be like whoever you want to be. There must have to be something, okay, in common that you guys share in common that you work with, you mm -hmm. know, gradually until you get to that level. And another thing is that people just want to jump from one to 10 at the same time. No, right. I also teach people how to celebrate baby steps. You have to climb from one place, you know, from one ladder to the next. So, so many people, I see some students, I say, where do you want to be? I want to be a CEO. Oh, you are just in school and now you want to be a CEO like tomorrow, that cannot work. You have to mm -hmm. celebrate, you know, you have to go from one step to another to another. Some people don't even know how to do that. That's also the reason why people keep rushing from one thing to another, get from one job to another, because they want to be where they have not prepared their minds, their body, you know, their soul and spirit to be. That's another thing. And, and Chibo, you mentioned this too. If somebody's in your class and we talked about the mentor piece, uh, how do you advise people to find a mentor? Oh, okay. We, we, there's a process we go through. Of course, you have to um, figure out who you are, figure out who you want, you know, you want to mentor you and mm -hmm. see if there is an alignment of purpose. Okay. It's a whole lot of things. So you have to check if there is alignment of purpose, if the, that person's leadership style is what you want to embrace. And again, if that person is even willing to, to mentor you. So we have all of those things. And we also tell people, don't be a user, be a contributor. You don't, <laughs> there's a word that we always say, don't torment your mentor. If you are going to have a mentor and you want to torment your mentor, it's not going to work. So <laughs> for you to be a mentee, you don't have to torment your mentor, meaning that you have to know exactly what you need from a mentor. The mentor doesn't need you. You are the one that needs help. 
So you have to come with a plan and say, hey, I want you to be my mentor. And this is what I want. To, this is what I've seen or what you do. And this is what I want to learn from you. This, all these things are part of the plan and foundation we teach people. If you don't have a plan, okay, there is no way you can succeed with a mentor because the mentor will ask you, what are you bringing to the table? What do you want me to do for you? How do you want me to do it? So if you don't have all those things, you can just admire people, but you know, you are not going to make anything from that. So we teach people how to follow strategically, how to talk to people, how to get their attention, how to get a meaningful connection with them, and at the same time, win their hearts to mentor you. It's not everybody that can accept because all these leaders are very busy. Why should I take you? Okay, exactly. why should I mentor you or why should a mentor mentor me? That, that person has to see something, especially, you know, serious, a level of seriousness in me that I want to be like him or her before they can take me up. Exactly. And I like that. Don't torment your mentor. <laughs> That's good. So how long, because I'm curious if you've seen some success stories, how long have you been doing the Inspiring Leaders Club? So we've done it for two years now, and it's part of the Nurses Bond program. So what we do is that when our members register, we offer them that part for mm. those that want to aspire to be leaders or people that are, you know, they have their businesses, they just don't know how to, you know, move on. Or those that are already in leadership, they just want to come to contribute, to see, you know, what they need to do too. Because I also, I always say there is room for more. There's always room for more. Mm. Nobody knows it all. So we, 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 you know, we invite people as part of our incentive for nurses bond, you know, to come and join us and learn from us and also teach us, okay, how to remain successful and, um, you know, how to grow in life. Both, so, both ways too. Yes. so even in two years, Chibu, have you seen some success stories already from people that have gone through the Inspiring Leaders class? Great stories. You will never believe it. Great really? stories. Oh, cool. People have moved from, you know, from the floor to managers, from managers to directors, from so, so many business stories coming up. Yes. In fact, we have meetings every three months. And when you hear the success stories, you will not believe it. People oh, now, cool. you know, some people say, oh, before I used to be an introvert. I didn't know how to approach people. Now I know how to approach people. We do resume reviews. We do all kinds of things. And people are growing and moving and celebrating baby steps. I can't even, every time I'm happy hearing those success stories. And um, they will also tell you that, yeah, we, we have the videos, you know, on YouTube, you know, how people, you know, the testimonials of what they got from Aspiring Leaders Club is amazing how people's life has been transformed. You know, you might think, oh, it's just aspiring leader. I'm not an aspiring leader. Everybody needs something. I, I mm -hmm. tell people, if you know too much, come and give. Yeah. If you think you don't know too much, come and learn. There's always an opportunity and there is, there's always room for more. That's excellent. And that's a nice segue into Nurses Bond. Tell the listeners and viewers how Nurses Bond came, what it is and how it came about. Thank you so much. You see, yeah. Nurses, Bond is, Nurses Bond is all about building a community of healthcare professionals where ideas are shared among, you know, members at professional levels and beyond. What is it all about? You know, me being a nurse and being, you know, in healthcare and a thankful person, a gratitude guy. <laughs> I found out there was something missing between, you know, healthcare professionals and others. I found out that, you know, healthcare professionals, we just walk, take care of patients and nobody takes care of us. So the issue now is how can we come together to talk about self, mental health, self-help, you know, um, what's it called? Self-care, you know, mm -hmm. family and all those stuff without worried about, you know, without being worried about our patient. You know, in the hospital, oh, go do this, go do that, go take care of this patient, go take care of this. And you can agree with me that, you know, healthcare professionals commit the highest suicide rates. They have the highest suicide rates, mm. in, you know, in the world because nobody takes care of them. So I look at that, I say, no, this has to stop. We have to create an opportunity where we can come and rejuvenate, you know, where we can come and talk to each other and relax without being worried about, um, like I've already said, um, you can't give what you don't have, okay? So we have to come, rejuvenate, recuperate, and move on. So that was how I, you know, I started, I created nurses bond, which means nurses bonding with other healthcare professionals, the doctors, the pharmacists, everybody that work in the same place. So I created it and how it started by, you know, 
networking, healthcare professional networking event in the evening, you know, on Saturday night, we come with nice music, food and wine and dine, you know, just connect and help each other. And from there, it started growing. We started networking and started helping people get jobs, started helping people get self-care, started helping people connect because it's hard, you know, <laughs> the doctors, the nurses, they are too busy and everybody's just being busy as if they are doing, I said busy doing nothing. <laughs> Not that they are doing nothing, but just helping. And you see that our inside is empty because we give and give and give and nobody gives to us. So I said, no, let's come together and give to each other while we give outside to outsiders. So that was how I created Nurses Band. Oh, that's really neat. And, and it's a neat story, sort of the background on, it, if you will. Self-care is not selfish. When you said that the first time I met you and I thought about it, I thought, wow, what a, what a great observation. And, and, and I think, you know, how to take better care of ourselves, you know, that relationship we have with the person in the mirror and so forth. It made me think back. I've been fortunate enough, I should knock on wood, to not be in the medical, uh, in, in that arena very often in my life. I've been very healthy and taking good care of myself and so forth. But the few times that I had been, and then visiting friends and different reasons why I've been into the healthcare system, it didn't really occur to me all that much until you said that one day about how many people just on the surface don't look that healthy, whether they can see they're either overweight, they're stressed, they're, they're just, they're, they don't, have, it's like you're going hundred miles an hour and you can tell in the, in the looks on their faces and so forth. And so what has been some of the keys to making people aware of self-care is not selfish and taking better care of themselves? What are a couple of key things, Chibu, that have helped people to understand that they got to take better care of themselves in the nurse's world? Number one is education. We keep, this is exactly what Nurses Bond is all about. We keep telling people, take out little time. I want to share a story with you. You know, when we started Nurses Bond, we said, hey, we have a um, healthcare professional networking event, just come. And what we hear all these nurses and professionals that, oh, I work, I want to work over time. Oh, I'm, I said, you have been working for 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, right? Why can't you take just five hours and mingle, miss, you know, miss and mingle with your fellow professionals? Every time you walk, that's why we, that's why we said self-care is not selfish. Taking care of yourself doesn't mean that you are selfish. Every time in the hospital, you just keep giving and keep giving and keep giving. Okay. Have you sat down at least for two hours, for five hours to take care of yourself? To ask yourself, all these things I'm giving. What if anything happens to me today? Who is going to take care of myself? Okay, so that is, that is the thing. And when we talk about it, it's like we keep telling them, take little time to think, take little time to, you know, so many people complain in the hospital, they've worked in one place for 20 years, for 30 years. They don't even know how to do their resumes anymore. They keep complaining. Wow. And we tell people, come, let's help you refresh your resume. There are other opportunities out there. Okay, so that, this is exactly what we are doing. So many people, they don't even know what to do, either DMP or, uh, or PhD or EDD or something. They want to go back to school, but nobody to talk to them because they are so engrossed and, you know, it, with the work they are doing that they start losing friends. They start losing themselves. Everything is all about, have you seen nurses and doctors in the hospital running? They, it's, it's almost that they are losing themselves. Yes, you're also a human being. When you do all these 12 hours, 24 hours, 50 hours a week, what time do you give yourself? What time do you give your family? How do you come back to work tomorrow? Okay, especially in this pandemic, you see people work seven hours, seven days a week, 12 hours, no life. No, that's not we, that you that you are, you know, helping people save life does not mean you will not save your own life. So this is what Nurses Bond is all about. We tell people, hey, come to our conferences, come to our events, come to our Spirit Leaders Club, come and learn. Okay, come and collaborate with other people because you cannot give what you don't have. You keep giving and giving and giving. One day you will run out. And when you run out, you don't even know that you are out and you keep just going. Okay, so it's through education, through, um, you know, our, you know, reaching out to people, talking, you know, like podcasts and events like this. We tell people, hey, self-care is not selfish. Take a time off, listen to yourself. Okay, check yourself out, hang out with, you know, other professionals and even hear what happens in their own organization, in their own hospitals and see what is going on. I mean, California, other people are in Chicago or New York and we need to collaborate and see what happens so that at least we, when we come back to work, we take care of people holistically because we have been rejuvenated and now we've talked to each other and we have cleared our minds. Boy, I can see how, I, I don't think you and I talked about this, but I know you're in California 
but I can certainly see how the need for this could spread nationwide because it right. just makes so much sense. And I, I thought, again, as you mentioned the people earlier about running around like crazy 20 years and don't even know how to do their resume and all these things, they've been working seven days a week and so on. And I was thinking about a good friend of mine who I see a fraternity brother about once a month and he used to sell heart valves. And he would always talk about the cardiac surgeons that he would, would call on to sell them the valves. And I was thinking there's the brain surgeon, the cardiac surgeons, and some of those that are the way kind of at the, at the top end of the medical profession, and yet some of the least healthy people he'd ever met, smoking two packs a day and, you know, and doing this, and, and yet they're in people's hearts and, and seeing all this damage. You know, and he was thinking, man, so I, that's why I just love that self-care is not selfish and really making it people understand. I just, I, I've said in my, this is what's going to be fun when I get to talk to the nurse respond group in October, is that this whole concept, and I have a couple of exercises that we'll do, what will help them to really understand that relationship with the person in the mirror is the most important. And when we, we don't have a good, I mean, whoever said that, put the air mask on you first and then put it on your child, that's been used a lot, but that's a good line. But I also use, like, if you're going to be to build a big building, you got to have a really solid foundation before you start adding stores. Well, the solid foundation is us. And so if right. we're trying to do all this, but build these other floors, but we're crumbling ourselves, the building's never going to stand up. It's going to fall over. So I just think it's really neat. But I think, is that ever an aspiration of yours, Chibu, to take this national? Because I think this could really be cool. Of course. Yes, that's what we plan to do. You know, from here, we just be doing conferences in different countries and other places. Mm. But we are starting from here in the U.S. And that's our plan to spread it everywhere. Because like I said, and I keep saying it, self-care is not selfish. And I will tell you how many people is difficult, very, very hard for them to come and learn something on their own. Oh, mm -hmm. if my hospital is not paying for it, I'm not attending. Mm -hmm. Oh, if this person is not paying for it, I'm not. This is not about your hospital. This is about you, okay? What exactly. are you giving? You keep giving and keep giving. So to the point that you have given everything that you have to the hospital or to your organization. No, you shouldn't be like that. I tell people, nobody hires a dead person. You were already living before getting to that job. So you don't work to live. I keep saying that, you know, people might not understand that you don't work to live. If you are not living, nobody will hire you. Any day you die, guess what's going to happen? They will replace you immediately. Exactly. Immediately. So exactly. you are not just this one is very important. You are not working to live. People can say, oh, how will I pay my bill? How would I pay? A dead person doesn't pay bill. Mm -hmm. You were already living. Exactly. So how will you pay your bill? How are you paying your bill before you got the job? That's why you need to, you know, calm down and ask yourself, what am I really doing? How can I give my best even to the patient that I'm taking care of? How can I give my best to my family? How can I, how can I remain, you know, my sanity? How can I remain safe and my mental health? So, you know, nurses bond is not about, oh, let my hospital do this. Like, it's just you yourself. What are you doing? How can you connect? You know, people don't even know how to make friends anymore. They I don't. know. I Everything know. is just like, oh, busy. My patient, I don't have time. If you see some people eating, you will not even, they don't even have time to eat. That's bad. And during their off days, guess what? They go back to work. I know. <laughs> and all this money, when you make it, what are you going to do with it? So it's very important that you now, you, uh, you know, this life now and where we are and what we teach people in nursing bond is begin to leverage this opportunity to network, to connect, you know, to free your mind. So, because we are relationship human beings, you know what I mean? And be grateful and be thankful and just look at nature and do stuff, mm -hmm. okay? Other than just like running that rat race, which, you know, how we started. Exactly. Just that rat race is there. Work with plan. And guess what? You will achieve everything that you want to achieve. Live a better life. Be happy and be successful. There's a book that I read that says, if you are right, <laughs> if you are in your car and still checking your email and testing where you are driving, you are not successful. So <laughs> if you, that's, that's a good message. If you are so many people are so many people they are, they are working, they are testing, they don't even have time to sit down and test and answer calls. Then no matter how many degrees and how much money you have, you are not successful because yeah. there are things that you're supposed to do <laughs> and not when you are driving. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was well said. Chibu, we're going to wrap up in just a couple of minutes and uh, I'm going to hit some of the takeaways. Uh, but I first want to ask you my favorite question to wrap up with every guest is, uh, what do you know today that you would have liked to know at 18 that would help you? Number one is collaboration. I believe in it so much. Collaboration. 
if I had collaborated, even here, I, I used to tell my friends, like, you know, when you come together with great ideas, you know, two good heads are better than one. Yes. They say good heads are better, two heads are better than one. Not only heads, two good ones. So if you can learn how to collaborate with each other, stop being jealous, stop, you know, competing with each other, but come together for a common goal. Okay, I would have been way more than where I am today. And this is what nurses bond is all about. See, it's bonding. Come together. Okay. I believe that whenever you have two, three, four people, you come up with great ideas and you yes. work together. Try wherever you are to work with someone. It's very important. Partner up. That's what we call it. Partner up. I'm not saying, you know, you should tell people your secrets and everything, but it's always good to partner. You guys will go for and go and do well. So yeah. That's that. Yeah, excellent, excellent advice. And I'm going to hit some of the takeaways. And I think when you said number one collaboration, and I think about just, for instance, the power of a mastermind. You get together with 10 or 12 people or five people, whatever it is, and the ideas that come out of that, that we can't think of all these things ourselves. So that collaboration is really good. So let me just mention, um, and let me give you a big compliment. There's some guests I have where I have to really stretch for some takeaways. And I have like three pages here of takeaways. So I said, I wow. just, let, let me hit some of the, let me hit some of the highlights of them, but put a smile on people's faces. I really like that. Uh, it's not a right. It's a privilege, which I think is such a great way of looking at our lives and so forth. And uh, no rat, or don't be part of the rat race. Walk, walk with plans. I like that. Every day have a plan for today. Uh, no foundation, no reason for living and no purpose. That's why you want to get your purpose. Have a baseline, get a mentor, celebrate baby steps. I love that. Don't torment your mentor. I love that. <laughs> the mentor will ask you what you need and can give you direction and so forth. Um, Inspiring Leaders Club, I really like. Um, taking care of healthcare professionals. I probably, my favorite is self-care is not selfish. I think that's so important. And then how to get better self-care is the number one is education. And you mentioned the self, the self-care for them to educate people on that, the resumes, all those things, take that break and so forth. Nobody hires a dead person. I like that too. You cannot give what you don't have and a dead person doesn't pay a bill. And uh, people don't even make friends anymore, but the number one is collaboration. So, so Chibu, wow. thank, you, thank you so much. Those are <laughs> tremendous takeaways. That's a lot more than I normally get. And that's pretty good for about 30 <laughs> minutes or so. So, so thank you, Chibu. And that's it for today's episode. Uh, my podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. As I mentioned earlier on Transformation Talk Radio, and it's available on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I always appreciate that. To purchase a gratitude journal or find out more about my gratitude coaching or teaching or speaking, you can connect with me at That Gratitude Guy, or as you can see in the background as well, That Gratitude Guy podcast will get you to the same place. And then also, a lot of people ask me about the Monday Morning Minute I send out. If you'd like to get the Monday Morning Minute video, it's a 60-minute gratitude video every Monday morning. Just text Gratitude Guy to the number 22828. You just text in the number 22828 in the message box, put in Gratitude Guy, and that'll get you signed up. And then also as an exclusive to my podcast listeners, I'm offering my six-month proprietary coaching program for the three-month price. Just email me and let me know you're interested in that. Finally, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, always remember how I end up every podcast. Remember, be grateful and never quit. So long. Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us, and you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.